Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Tombstone Tourist. I'm still here at the Hendersonville Memory Gardens in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and this is my third video from here. In my previous two videos, I visited the grave of several country music stars like Johnny and June Carter Cash, Mother Maybelle Carter, Merle Kilgore, along with Grand Ole Opry stars Charlie Walker and Johnny Russell. In this video, I'm going to wrap up my visit to this cemetery by visiting the final resting place of a few more country music stars. People like Luther Perkins, Verlin Husky, and this lady, who was a member of the Grand Ole Opry for more than 60 years. Here we are at the final resting place of Jean Shepard. Emma Jean Shepard was born on November 21st, 1933 in Pauls Valley, Oklahoma, but she was raised near Bakersfield, California. As a teenager, she played bass and sang in an all-girls band called the Melody Ranch Girls. In 1952, while she was still with the Melody Ranch Girls, Hank Thompson heard her sing and helped her sign a contract with Capitol Records. In 1953, she recorded her first hit with Ferlin Husky called A Dear John Letter. She followed that up with her first top 10 solo hit, A Satisfied Mind. She went on to appear on the Ozark Jubilee, which was a national TV show. That led her to become one of the first female members of the Grand Ole Opry. She joined the Opry in 1955 and never left. In 1960, Jean married fellow Grand Ole Opry star Hawkshaw Hawkins, but their marriage would end in tragedy. In 1963, Hawkshaw Hawkins was killed in a plane crash that also claimed the lives of Cowboy Copas, Patsy Cline, and Ramsey Hughes. Hawkshaw, Cowboy Copas, and Ramsey Hughes are buried at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in nearby Goodlettsville, Tennessee, while Patsy is resting at the Shenandoah Memorial Park in her hometown of Winchester, Virginia. I also visited the crash site and will put a link to all those videos in the description below. Jean loved the Grand Ole Opry and once said during an interview that she cherished every minute that she spent on stage. She was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2011 and on November 21st, 2015, Jean Shepard became the first woman to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry for 60 consecutive years. Following her performance that night, there was a ceremony on stage that turned out to be Jean's final Opry appearance as she announced her retirement. That ended her 60 year Opry career. Less than a year later, on September 25, 2015, Jean Shepard passed away at the age of 82. In an earlier video, I stopped in Sparta, Tennessee and visited the grave of Lester Flatt who along with Earl Scruggs formed the popular bluegrass band, the Foggy Mountain Boys. A little ways down the hill from the grave of Gene Shepherd, we find the final resting place of one of those Foggy Mountain Boys. No broke player, Uncle Josh Graves. Burkett Howard Graves was born on September 27, 1927. He was a native of Teleco Plains, Tennessee, and is credited with introducing the resonator guitar, commonly called the dobro, to bluegrass music. In 1942, Buck, as he was sometimes called, joined the Pierce Brothers playing around Gatlinburg in Upper East Tennessee. He later joined Wilma Lee and Stoney Cooper on the WWVA Wheeling Jamboree in Wheeling, West Virginia. 
In 1955, Buck joined Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs' Foggy Mountain Boys. As a member of the Foggy Mountain Boys, Josh joined bass player cousin Jake Tullock and fiddle player Paul Warren. Lester started calling Buck Uncle Josh, and the name stuck, and for the rest of his career, he was known as Uncle Josh Graves. Josh stayed with the Foggy Mountain Boys until the group disbanded in 1969. He then joined Lester's new group called the Nashville Grass. In 1971, Josh left the Nashville Grass to join the Earl Scruggs in the Earl Scruggs Review. He stayed with Earl until 1974 when he left and embarked on a solo career that lasted more than 30 years. During the next 30 years, Uncle Josh recorded with such artists as Jim and Jesse and the Virginia Boys, bashful brother Oswald and Kenny Baker, just to name a few. He was a popular performer at bluegrass festivals around the country, along with making an occasional appearance on the Grand Old Opry. The old Foggy Mountain Boy and one of the best dobro players ever. Burkett Howard Uncle Josh Graves passed away at the age of 79 on September 30th, 2006. Moving on to the northwest side of the cemetery, the next person that I want to visit is right up this path. Here we find the final resting place of one of the men who created the rockabilly style of music. Here is the grave of Luther Perkins. Luther Perkins was born on January the 8th, 1928 in Como, Mississippi. As a youth, he taught himself to play guitar and in 1953, while he was working at an auto sales company in Memphis, that was managed by Roy Cash, who was the brother of Johnny Cash. Perkins and his co-workers, Marshall Grant and Red Canodal, began playing guitars together when business was slow at work. Roy was so impressed with the three that he introduced them to his brother when Johnny moved to Memphis in 1953. When Johnny got an audition with Sun Records in 1954, he brought the three musicians with him. After the session, Luther and Johnny became lifelong friends, and it was Luther who was credited with creating the iconic Boom Chicka Boom style that was featured on most of Johnny's recordings. From 1955 until 1968, Luther Perkins played the lead guitar in Johnny Cash's band, The Tennessee Three. In 1968, health problems forced Luther to leave the band and retire to a new home on Old Hickory Lake here in Hendersonville. On August 3, 1968, Luther was at his home when he fell asleep on the sofa holding a cigarette, setting fire to the living room. A relative who was living in the house discovered the fire and found Luther unconscious near the door. He was rushed to a hospital where he died two days later on August 5th, 1968, Luther Perkins was 40 years old. As I was about to leave the cemetery, I saw this memorial bench and decided to wrap up my visit to the Hendersonville Memory Gardens by visiting the grave of Grand Ole Opry star, Berlin Husky. Husky was born on December 3rd, 1925 in the tiny community of Gumbo, Missouri. At an early age, his uncle taught him to play guitar and he dropped out of high school. He moved to St. Louis, where he worked as a truck driver by day and performed in honky-tonks during the night. During World War II, 
Berlin served in the Merchant Marines, entertaining troops on transport ships. After the war, he took a job as a disc jockey before signing with Capitol Records in 1953. His first hit was a Dear John letter that he recorded with Gene Shepard. In 1957, he recorded a song entitled Gone. It was not only a country hit, but it was also a crossover hit when it reached number four on the pop charts. The popularity of Gone led Verlin Husky to become a member of the Grand Ole Opry, where he performed for over 50 years. In 1960, Verlin had his biggest hit with his record, Wings of a Dove. The record stayed atop the country charts for 10 weeks and reached number 12 on the pop charts. In the 1960s and 70s, Ferlin had a number of other popular recordings, including Rose Cries a Lot and Just For You. In 1977, Ferlin suffered a heart attack and took some time off. He eventually returned to the Opry stage and resumed touring, but over the years he continued to suffer from cardiac issues, which would limit his performances. In 2010, Berlin Husky received Country Music's top honor when he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. After suffering from cardiac related issues for more than 30 years, Berlin Husky died of congestive heart failure on March the 17th, 2011. He was 85 years old. This wraps up my visit to the Hendersonville Memory Gardens here in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I hope you found something interesting in this and the other two videos that I recorded here. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you have a favorite memory of any of the country music stars that we visited here, please leave me a comment. Your personal memories are always welcome and I really enjoy reading them. I have a lot more coming from here in Nashville and Middle Tennessee, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing so that you will get notified when I post more videos. Now, as always, please remember, life is a wonderful journey. Take time and enjoy it. And until next time, I'll see you down the road. So long, everyone.